The rush to get kids back to school during this pandemic led many districts to outsource their virtual lesson plans. Douglas County Schools paid close to a million dollars to a private company called Edgenuity. Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski took a closer look at the Edgenuity plan and discovered it not only failed the grade for many Doug Coast students, but it has a history of failure in districts across the country. Welcome to my world, you guys. <laughs> You're looking at Katherine Dorman's virtual classroom. Uh, this is my 37th year. <laughs> Teaching science for Ponderosa High School in Douglas County. It was really sad for me that this is how my last year teaching is because I'm not really teaching. Not really teaching because she's a full-time e-learning teacher. This is what I do. Using this online yeah, learning platform student. called Edgenuity. Warm up instruction summary assignment quiz so they just work their way through it with very little interaction from actual Douglas County teachers. A lot of us take water for granted. Is Edgenuity a good platform in your opinion? Is it the best way to learn? No, not at all. Welcome to Edgenuity. Douglas County Schools paid Edgenuity more than $800,000 to take over the district's online learning teaching nearly 6,000 students, grades K through 12, who signed up for remote learning. A platform Denver 7 Investigates found elementary schools are no longer even using. They just stopped using it. Well, there's a lot of students in elementary school and we paid for that platform. Do you think Edgenuity was worth the $800,000 the district paid? No, <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of money. The next topic on our agenda. The public first learned about the deal at an August 4th board meeting, days before teachers were scheduled to go back but to work. We want to talk a little bit now about edgenuity. Marlena Gross-Taylor, the district's former chief academic officer, signed on the dotted line. None of the funding for this program will be coming out of our general fund. The money came from Federal CARES Act and ESSER COVID relief funds, which means taxpayers still paid for it. The deal was rushed through with a no-bid process because of the pandemic. The district justified it as an emergency purchase. This amount is going to be over the $500,000 threshold. Fast forward to mid-August, and with the clock ticking for the start of school. There were people who didn't have logins um, up until the last minute. Callie Labies, the head of the teachers' union, she says the rollout of Edgenuity was nothing short of chaos. I have a friend who her grandchild had four teachers in a period of about five days. The issues forced the district to delay online learning to the end of August. We had one week to figure it out and we self-taught ourselves. Emails obtained by Denver 7 Investigates show parents, teachers and even board members had serious concerns about Edgenuity. A third grade teacher wrote, we are one week away from starting with students, and teachers do not even have access to the main resource for e-learning. One parent wrote, This is not what I signed up for when we chose the remote option. I'm feeling very much like a bait and switch has occurred. We have ended up with a platform that has created great inequities for our students, and um, some of it has just frankly been wasted. Money wasted because elementary schools stopped using it and there was no refund to the district. When resources are as limited as they are, that money could absolutely have been better spent. Maybe that CARES Act money could have gone towards not having furlough days for teachers. Dorman says instead of paying a private company to outsource learning, e-learning teachers could have created their own curriculum and taught it virtually. Hybrid teachers were already doing that once school moved back to full remote. I think I could have developed online courses. There was no dil due diligence done. Teachers didn't have a say in this. Other districts like Cherry Creek chose not to outsource its online learning to a private company. Instead, it used CARES Act funds to pay existing teachers extra money to get its platform up and running. And Douglas County isn't the only school district with edgenuity problems. Tennessee parents protested against the all virtual platform holding up signs that said Edgenuity does not equal its teachers. In Auburn, Alabama, the former Speaker of the House was recently convicted for accepting a more than $200,000 payout from Edgenuity. There were two people who are no longer with us who made that decision, and it didn't seem very transparent. Those two people are Superintendent Thomas Tucker and Chief Academic Officer Marlena Gross-Taylor. I think they abandoned ship. Uh, and I feel that it's very unfair to those who were left behind to implement those decisions. We wanted to ask Interim Superintendent Corey Weiss what he plans to do about it. But the district declined our request for an interview, 
pointing out that administrators who are no longer with the district signed off on the contract. And while that is true, we found Weiss was no stranger to the Edgenuity deal. I will say the one thing that Edgenuity does provide is a more comprehensive piece. That's him telling the school board back in August why he believes Edgenuity was the best option. And, you know, you just can't help but wonder, did somebody, did anybody benefit it? In a lengthy statement, the district said that Edgenuity provided more value for the cost. It also acknowledged there were technical issues, integration issues, difficulty accessing customer service and technical support, as well as concerns with grade level content not matching what was originally guaranteed. The district says it's still trying to decide whether to extend its contract with Edgenuity for another year. I'm Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski.